Howdy everybody. In today's video, I want to introduce the topic of fuzzy matching. So fuzzy matching is a technique to compare strings that are similar to each other, but may not be exactly the same. They may be the same, might be slightly different. It's very useful when dealing with uh, variations of misspellings, slight differences and formats of data, um, spellings of addresses like street spelled out s-t-r-e-e-t -E -E versus s-t period um and people make mistakes all the time i've been in the business world for 20 years you see this all the time you have two different data sources that are mostly similar there's no single source of truth there should be but there just isn't and there's slight differences in the spellings of all kinds of words people's names um addresses vernacular jargon whatever whatever you can imagine there's all kinds of issues and problems and mistakes that need to be dealt with right so this is a very efficient very straightforward uh solution for dealing with this this is um two sources of data i'm gonna hit control enter here to refresh it two sources of data for major league baseball players um player name all kinds of stats about the player uh oh, we have 100 stats here and then the salaries of each player and you can see right off the bat in the first record here greg z-a-u and greg Z-A-U-N, there's a difference here, right? This is the same guy, but there's a misspelling in one of these. I don't even know offhand which one is correct. Is it Z-A-U, Z-A-U, Z-A-U-N? But they, they should be corrected. It should be consistent. It should be the same. Uh, two people can't have, I mean, one person can't have two spellings of their name. There's just one. Um, so there's a mistake here. So we're going to address this in this example. First of all, we have two different data sets. We have to merge them together just to <clears throat> make them converged and coalesce here. So that's what um, data frame that merge does. So we're merging DF pitches dot merge. This is the property here to DF salaries. And then we're doing a left merge on the player name and we're doing an outer merge. So we get all the records here. Okay. So uh, I'm not gonna step through every single line of code here. It'll just take way too long, but I will save this notebook as a HTML file and you can download this and double click the file to open it and you'll have all the source code here and you can run this in your own Jupyter notebook so you can see how it, how it works. And then of course you can take this example and customize it for your own specific needs, right? Like I'm trying to make this very generic um, to solve all kinds of different problems. You'll just have to plug in your specific data set and hit control enter to run it. Okay, so we took care of that. We just ran it, refreshed it. Now we're going to call this library fuzzy wuzzy so it's kind of a cute name right kind of a fuzzy cutesy kind of name i guess but it's it's very practical it's looking at two different um data types the players names here and doing a comparison between the two to see how similar or dissimilar these are so we're looking at the player name the match name comes from where is it? i just saw it, uh here match name right here comes from this library and we are looking for um data frame salaries okay not the salary this is the player name in the other data frame that we merge together and we're looking at a threshold of 0.75 percent or greater right anything that's greater than 75 percent we're going to consider um a misspelling a typo some type of mistake if there's zero percent match then these are totally different people right if it's 0.75 percent um it could be different people, but most likely we already saw that there's a mistake in the data. So pretty much it's a mistake. And of course you could change this threshold. You can make it to anything up to 100%, right? If you're just looking for perfect matches, if you're looking for a uh, finer precision of mistakes, you might set that to 0.9, or in this case, it's not even a decimal, it's, it's a whole number, but this is the percentage of deviation you're looking for a minimum threshold to, to exceed that, to be able to say, okay, these are mistakes, right? So all of these that are scoring 100, these match perfectly, right? There's no issue. The issues happen down here with these records. Um, so we have Henry Blanco and Henry Blanco. I'm guessing this is probably the same person as a misspelling the name, same here, and so on and so forth. So, um, so very helpful, very useful. You can get all the data from this spot right here. I'm gonna share that with you. Let's look at a, a slightly different example now. Again, importing the same library. Fuzzy Wuzzy, gotta love the name, right? Fuzzy Wuzzy, import fuzz. And this is just a um, nomenclature or a, a name that we're assigning to this library. We can certainly use Fuzzy Wuzzy straight up. A lot of times the convention is to assign a um, 
an alias name to the original library name. Okay, so um, here we have people's names and addresses, right? And we are going to look for matches um, or non-matches between the two. So let me run this. Again, I'm not going to step through every line of code, take way, way too long, but I will share this with you, of course, and then you can run this on your own system and spend some time to get intimate with it, um, pick it apart, understand what's going on under the hood and things like this, right? So now we have, again, the percentage of match between the original and the um, the second address, right? So here we say Rob has 67% similarity uh, between the names and 89% between the addresses, right? But it is slightly off. So these uh, percentage matches are very useful, very helpful, right? So now I'm going to look at one more example. This is stock data that's traded on different stock exchange. I'm looking at the London Stock Exchange and the NYSE, so the New York Stock Exchange. You can go to this uh, URL right here and copy paste this. Again, I'm going to share this with you when I post a video. Put that into, uh, I'll put that into your address bar here, right? And you can get this all for free. This is all open source. You don't have to pay for anything and apply for your own API key. You can register for the API key right here. Click this button, right? And it's gonna give you a sign up message. I'm not gonna do that, Eric got my API key. I'm not gonna run the code because the API is uh, personal and confidential. I can't share that with you. I, I ran this just to test it before the video. You just pop in your API key and I can pretty much guarantee it's gonna work if you have all these libraries set up. If you do have any error, just do a pip install for the name of the library. You would go to your Anaconda prompt do a pip install, pip, and the name of the library. And it's going to install the library and then you can run it. That's only if you have an issue here, okay? If the library has not been installed. Um, and there's so many libraries, it's over 10,000 now. So you can't install all these libraries by default. It would take up all the, the space in your hard drive. You just install the ones that you need, right? So, <clears throat> so that's why they set it up that way. So I'm going to... Um, grab this data from the uh, London Stock Exchange GB is Great Britain and then the New York Stock Exchange. Look at the results I'm getting here. Okay, so I'm getting the symbols, uh, 500 rows, six columns. That's what this number represents. This is the shape of the data, 500 rows, six columns. And we'll have the symbols and then the short name and then the long name and the exchange that's traded on and a few more details here about these, these stocks, right? whatever's relative to that. So, uh, so that's it. So we're going to compare the data on these two exchanges because the name naming convention can be slightly different. If we go over here, you can have symbol uh, tyt.l, that's short for London Stock Exchange, rsd, sorry, rdsa.l, again, for represents the London Stock Exchange, but that's not necessarily going to match the American ticker symbols, right? We're looking at the similarities between symbols and trying to do the match on this, right? So Fuzzy Wuzzy is going to come come through for us in a big way right here. We're looking for scores over 90%. Now we want to be more precise with the naming um, conventions. We saw in the prior example, we said this can be a little more relaxed. 75% is good enough for the names. It could be a bunch of misspellings. For stock data, if we're going to trade on this and, and put actual money um, into the market, we want to be pretty confident that these names are going to match, right? And anything that's not, I don't, I don't care about it because it's just a different ticker, a different symbol, or a totally different enterprise altogether. It's a different entity. I'm not concerned about those. I want the 90% matches and better. Uh, I'm not going to rerun this right now because, again, it's going to throw an error because my uh, API um, key is not in there. But you can see I ran this just prior to kicking off the video here, and you can see what the results are. Okay, so we have 111 matches now. We went from 500 down to 111. So a lot of these did not meet the test of 90% or, or greater, and that's fine. Okay, we're just looking at the results here that match. And here we have the final results at the bottom. Let me go up just a tad here. Okay, so we're getting some messages about completing. These are just messages. It's not it's an error or anything bad. Okay, so now we have the symbols. We have the short name, the long name, and then the matching score. Okay, so these are matching 100%. That's great. 
there are slight differences in the data right here. So we have the price of the U.S. and the price of Great Britain um, stocks. These are pretty close. They're off by a tiny fraction of a percent. Uh, and I don't know why. It could be a difference in price. It could be uh, an arbitrage opportunity, right? If you buy low and sell high, you can buy in one exchange and sell on another. You'd have to be <clears throat> outfitted to do this if you have just a, a personal stock trading account at Merrill Lynch or... Fidelity or Schwab or whatever, I don't think this is um, feasible. But if you were a sophisticated trader, you could do this. Although this is day end prices, it's not real time prices that are changing throughout the day. So I don't think there's really any arbitrage opportunities at this point. But when you get down here, this is this is interesting too. We still have a score of 100%. So these are matching, but these prices are very different, right? The price swings are all over the place. 159.25 on the US exchange. And then $1,160 on the Great Britain Exchange. Here we have 12.3 and 300. So I looked into this. Th these cases are kind of unique. There's a few different things that could be going on here. Um, there could be currency differences and exchange rate fluctuations, but I don't think so because in the previous example over here, we saw these prices are pretty close. So I think when you adjust for currencies, um, it should be very close. You're not going to get a currency um, differential of that magnitude. It's just it's just not going to happen. More likely, these are stock classes or American depository receipts. So the for these specific stocks, it's just not going to match up dollar for dollar, right? It's just going to be different. You could buy uh, one share on the U.S. exchange, and it could give you um, 10 shares or vice versa. I mean, you'd probably buy one on the Great Britain exchange, and you, you'd get 10 or even even 20 over here. So we'd have to look into this. This is really <clears throat> not what this video is about, but there's definitely something going on. Um, it could even be market conditions in one on a, one exchange that is not affecting the other exchange or some type of liquidity issue where um, this guy is not willing to trade because he has no liquidity at all. This is much cheaper because you have full liquidity. You can do whatever you want anytime you want. This price over here could be just jammed up because um, a variety of reasons. The, the trader, the broker can't move the money. There could be a, cu a couple different things. So I wouldn't say this was a trading opportunity, but uh, certainly the fuzzy matching is working. There's a few different types of fuzzy matching here. And you, again, you can see this is used in all kinds of scenarios, right? There's a Levenstein distance um, matching. I, I already put out a video about that. Uh, it's called correlations. If you want to check it out, that's pretty cool. There's a Jacquard similarity. Uh, methodology. I do have a video coming out about that, comparing um, different, uh, different. What uh, this one was about data frames, comparing names in data frames and matching different data frames based on similarity. A couple years ago, I had to do a huge exercise where I had to merge one million files into two hundred and fifty tables in a database. So that was pretty pretty much a heavy lift. I had to use Joe Card similarity to find out of the 1 million files, which were substantially similar and which were not, and then pick the right ones to, to condense that down into 250. Uh, there's a synetic phonic matching and cosine similarity. You see that in the NLP world. So natural language processing. Um, I've got a couple of videos uh, coming out about that topic too. So check that out when you have a chance. That's pretty much it. I think I took you through all the end-to-end um, -end HZ on this. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Thanks for your time today. Have a great day. Bye.